Hello everyone, welcome to a very windy but fortunately slightly warmer United Kingdom. Now those of you that know me will know that I am a reasonably big BMW fan, but some of their products of late just left me a bit cold. Now one of the BMWs that I owned, which is possibly the most bipolar of all my cars, was my Z4 M Coupe. It was when it wanted to be absolutely brilliant. Unfortunately, about eight times out of 10, it was utterly insufferable. Now, BMW are a bit of an odd company when it comes to their sports cars. They can never really seem to make their mind up as to what they're doing. Now, the second generation Z4, which was termed the E89, they didn't even do an M version. And it looked to a lot of people like BMW had just given up. In fact, the top of the tree was this, the snappily named BMW Z4 S Drive 35 little i big S. Compared to the E85, the first gen Z4, it's quite a different animal. I think it's a very good looking one, but until today, I've never had the opportunity to drive one. So let's take it out and see just how different it can be compared to the old car and whether maybe, just maybe, BMW eventually realized what they wanted from their sports car. Now there's two cars in this review I'm going to be talking about quite a bit in comparison to this one. The first is my old Z4 M Coupe and the second is my Evora. Now the Evora I'm talking about not only because it's the car that viewers to my channel know and the car that I drive the most, but this car's current owner is also thinking about buying one. Now my Z4M, as mentioned, was a deeply flawed car. It was just punishingly stiff. Really, really crazy hard ride. And on European roads, it was just about tolerable. On a road like this, a typical British B road, it was awful. I can tell you straight off the bat, this car is a vast improvement. And there's one other thing that I could never do in my Z4 M Coupe, which you can in this. And I've been waiting to do this for about six months now. I've decided that because winter in this country has been so long, we're bypassing spring and going straight to summer. I apologize in advance for any wind noise. I'm making the most of this dry weather. Now, vital stats on the 35i S. It's the old N54 twin turbo motor. BMW confusingly had a couple of motors they called twin power. There was this, the original N54, which did indeed have two turbos. And then the later 55 was a twin scroll single turbo unit. This is basically the same setup as used in the 1M. Now, the factory numbers for this motor were about 330 horsepower. So it was actually similar to what the old Z4M's S54 put out, with obviously a healthy amount more torque. Now, I really, really like BMW's straight six engines in nearly any form, but this one in particular might just be their best. It's so muscular, yet doesn't really feel turbocharged. It just feels like a very, very big capacity engine. Now those earlier cars, the, the first generation 35 IS, and they offered those in a color called Atacama Yellow, which I really, really like. Those put out pretty much the claimed numbers, 330 or so. Something happened later in the production run though, and this car went on a dyno put out about 370, which is nice. Now there's one car which it's impossible to drive any small convertible 
without mentioning. And that's a Boxster. When the Z4 came out, and then of course when the M came out, people were always talking about how it compared to the Boxster. And the problem is that, you know, if you're a real driving fanatic and you're all about handling, 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 well, it was a losing battle for BMW. The Boxster is best in class. An early Boxster won't do that though. And with that first generation E85 Z4, BMW, I think, were trying to make it something of a Boxster rival. It was considerably lighter than this car, which, by the way, weighs in at around 1,600 kilos. When this generation came out and the fabric folding top was replaced for this nice hard top setup, I think BMW realized that trying to go after Porsche was just a losing battle. So they went after Mercedes instead. Obviously, people that bought the SLK wanted the nice looks of a hard top when it's up, and they wanted the better quality of interior when the top is up, and they wanted the smoother, more cosseting ride. And they kind of got it right. There's a few oddities about this car. Now, let's take the cabin, for example. I like the way it's styled. It's a mixture of familiar and unfamiliar from the BMW products that I've been in. The closest thing this is like would be say, an E92 3 Series. The view out the front is great. And if you want to drive this car on a daily basis, as this car's owner does, the good news is that nice, big, muscular, three litre twin turbo engine, <laughs> it's even reasonably economical. It'll do over 40 on the motorway. So why are you downsizing Mercedes? Not so great is the fact that even though I have the seat as far back as it will go, I still feel like I'm trying to kiss the steering wheel. There's, there's no room here at, at all. It's a very, very odd driving position. This is something that happened in the old Z4 as well. And when you look at this car and you consider it's not a two plus two, it's strict two seater, and it's not a small car, you'd think there'd be more room. If you're an extra, extra, extra large gentleman, you may find this an issue. I love the fact that you can see that bonnet. Too many cars I drive have massive bonnets and you can't see them. This one, you can. Lovely. This car also has the double clutch gearbox. BMW seem to be flitting between having the single clutch manuals, which are horrendous, then they started using the double clutches, but now they seem to be moving away from them. So the M products seem to be some of the last cars to use them, but even those are now moving towards automatic boxes. I can kind of understand why. I mean, that new ZF8 speed box, well, I call it new, it's probably about five years old now. It's a really, really good box, especially when properly set up, but these dual clutch units, they are awesome. Very intuitive to drive. There's never really any doubt as to what it's going to do. This car makes a lovely noise as well. Now, I had an E46 330 and I had an E46 M3. Now, before I would say the E92 generation, the regular BMW straight six, the non-M version, was a, it was a pleasant sounding car. There was nothing wrong with it, but it wasn't a great sounding car. With these though, they're really nice. Is that is the standard exhaust? Yeah. yeah. This is the standard standard exhaust, which I am told is quite different to the setup used in the 35i. There's almost two independent exhaust routes in the car. Mm. The car does crackle and pop a little on the overrun. It does it a bit more in sport mode than in comfort. It's a pleasant noise. It's not the ridiculous someone's thrown a firecracker out of the car noise that you get from either the M4 with a performance exhaust or an F-Type. It's very well judged. It's nice. Now I should give special mention to this car's owner who has spent a long time trying to get the handling in this car just right. Now one of the biggest elements of that has been getting the right tyres on this car. This car is wearing OZ alloys, which are not super light items, despite the fact that they look very spindly, but they are noticeably lighter than the BMW fit ones. Something that's also made a great difference to the car, I'm told, is the tyre choice. 
Now, after going through many different options, the car's owner has settled on Goodyear Eagle F1 asymmetrics. Now, oh, for the love of Pete, okay. Oh. So this is a YouTuber's nightmare, being in someone else's really wide sports car between a bin lorry and a high curb. Fortunately, gentleman in old Mercedes realizes the plight. The throttle response in this motor is just instantaneous. I love twin turbo setups. I'm not a turbo fan, generally speaking, but whenever I see twin turbos in a car, I tend to find myself getting on with it a lot better. Now, those of you who've been watching my Mercedes reviews and things, this is what a gearbox is meant to do. I'm in sport mode, button press, it changes down. Press up, and it's up, and it's up, and it's down, and it's up, and it's down. You press the button, it does the gear change. It, it's really simple. They understand it in Munich. Oh, it wanders, this car. It really wanders. If I was following myself down here, chasing my Z4M coupe, that Z4M would be would be off, would be gone. It was an incredibly stiff car, but it gripped. And the thing with the Z4M, it, it, it pissed you off. It really annoyed you. It was just so bang, 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 lump, lump, lump. You just, you hated it. And then when you got it onto a road like this and you decided to basically beat the living daylights out of it, suddenly, for some reason, that car was a real masochist. It loved it and it became truly brilliant. Unfortunately, those incidences were just too few and far between. Now this car's set up really soft. I can feel the back end trying to wag, and I know there's no mechanical limited slip diff on this. This is probably the slowest I've been down here in quite some time. A hot hatch is gonna walk all over you. It's really soft, actually. I'm, I'm kind of surprised. I mean, if you guys look at this, like, that's that's a bit all over the place. I think maybe your tracking does need some work. <laughs> now, having a car like this, I can understand completely, completely how you get you get out of a Boxster and you get into one of these and you just call it a piece of shit. You, you, you just say it, it's, it's trash, it's garbage, it doesn't handle, it's all over the place. And, and you know, look, if you want a, a real sports car experience, don't get one of these. It's not very good at it at all. However, it's really comfy. It's really nice. It's just, it's got a different identity. And I think BMW were very, very smart to not even try and go after Porsche because they were doomed to fail, but to instead go after your Mercedes crowd who just wants something a lot softer. The engine's awesome. It's far better than the chassis setup. It really pulls. Actually, it pulls quite hard, actually. <laughs> yeah, you need, to, you need to use a lot more road in this than most of the cars I'm used to. This is the softest car I've driven in a very long time, actually. But it's just, it's got its own pace. That's, that's the thing, it, it's got its own pace, there's a certain thing it's comfortable doing, and don't, don't ask it to do anything else because it, it won't want to do it. Don't, you know, driving this car down these roads, I can tell now, is, is kind of not fair on it because it's not, it's not what it's meant for. Well, it'll, it'll do it, you've just got to pay attention to the speed you throw it around a corner at. So, conclusion time. I really like this car. Comparing it with either my Evora or indeed the old Z4 is nearly pointless, really. It's, it's a completely different car. It has an entirely different character. It doesn't drive like it sounds like, let's put it that way. It sounds and looks aggressive and sporty and it's not. I'm driving it in sport mode now and it's perfectly comfortable 
it's nice, it's refined. There's some cars, including convertibles, which driving them along at four tenths, five tenths, you just, you just feel like you're wasting your time. This car, I'll probably drive this back later. I won't drive it that quick because I'll enjoy it just as much because the roof is down. It's making a pleasant noise. I've got a nice view out the front, good visibility out the sides. And I'm kind of happy, man, because I'm behind the wheel of a BMW that I like again, which is nice. Which one would you guys buy? Would you buy this? Old Z4, a Boxster, an SLK? Something a bit different, 370Z convertible? I don't know, I'll put a little poll up here and you can tell me. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.